All righty. Is All it right. just me? No, it's the three of us. Celine's on too. Yeah, as well. Okay, good. <laughs> She's just hiding behind a uh, uh, yes. headshot. Um, okay, so we got a whole bunch of different ingredients here to make hummus. And the whole idea is to grind up the garbanzo beans to be the base. And then you guys are going to be able to go in and adjust and make different recipes with it. So, you know, whether you're making a roasted pepper and kalamata olive hummus, an artichoke, lemon, garlic, and tahini hummus, a roasted beet hummus. So I'm going to show you how to make the base, and then I'm going to make a few different variations on it. And then you guys can mix and play and have fun with it. Um, and going forward, you can do this with all sorts of different things. You know, I love a roasted pepper, olive hummus, and I'll add some feta to it or um, just all sorts of little things like that just to have fun and do it. So to do the hummus to begin with, I'm gonna actually turn my camera down a little. Now, this is gonna get annoying and loud, like me. <laughs> so I put the garbanzos in. Now there's a few different types of garbanzos you can use. Um, you can use dry and boil them yourself, absolutely. You can use canned garbanzos. And then there's one brand that I really love for hummus, it's Carmelina. Um, the Carmelina garbanzos are just really clean. They have no can like metal kind of flavor like some of them do. Um, so those are the ones I always prefer when I make hummus. Um, unless I'm cooking the beans myself, but cooking the beans yourself, you have a lot of inconsistencies because you know, if you cook them too long, they have too much water in them. If you cook them too short, then they're gonna have real gritty, grainy kind of hummus. Um, so I take my garbanzos and I start with just, call it three tablespoons of water. And this is just to get it started. And then I'll start adding water because I can always add more water, but I can't take water out. Um, now I'm gonna give this a little. And what happens on the initial one, is it just kind of chops up the garbanzo beans. See, there's still some whole ones in there. Um, but this tells me now, hey, you know, I gotta add more water to start this tray going. So I'm gonna add a few more tablespoons and this is kind of the process. And Celine, this is where I said, the only part of this that becomes a headache and like a bullet because you gotta <laughs> unscrew it and screw it back on. That's fine. So I'll get this going again. And now the number one secret, like the absolute most important thing to making hummus, and you have to remember this or else your hummus will never work, is that you have to Got it? Yeah. I'm just kidding. I didn't say anything. No. So I'm going to add a, a little more water. So now it's getting a little bit thicker of a paste consistency. And I just add water to water. You can't really over blend the hummus. You know, there's certain places like if you've ever been to Abba and had hummus there, um, by far my favorite anywhere. But they actually have like a turbocharged blender that they use for it, that they had custom made just to do their hummuses, which is insane. Um, but that's why theirs has such an amazing consistency. Now, okay, this is looking a little better and I'll show you. You can see it's getting that almost baby food kind of hummus consistency. Now, if I want to have a chunky hummus, I still wouldn't take it to this point and call it done. What I would do is actually puree it even more and more and let it get super smooth. And then I'd chop some garbanzo beans on the side just with a knife and fold them in. Because mm -hmm. the more you puree it right now, it's kind of like you're building that really amazing base. And this whole hummus is all about the base. But since this is already smooth and spreadable, at this point, I'm going to add some of the olive oil instead of the water. And that's going to allow it to start adding some richness, adding a really great mouthfeel. Um, I'm going to lower my speed down a little. So you can see it's not as loud, thankfully. And I just, and all I did here was just drizzle the, the oil in. And now I'm going to turn it up. How much olive oil did you add? I was busy blending. I'm trying. All right. So 
this hummus is silky and delicious. I mean, it's absolutely fantastic. Now, if I wanted to just make a standard plain hummus, my flavorings would be tahini, which is a toasted sesame seed paste. Um, that's what you, that brown liquid you have here. I would microplane a little raw garlic in there, a touch of salt, and maybe a little bit of lemon, and that's it. And that's kind of my standard hummus base. But since I'm, or just my standard hummus now, but if I'm using this to make other hummuses, I'm gonna, for the sake of our demo, take some of this hummus out. And if I wanted to make, say, a an artichoke tahini hummus, look at this. I'm gonna show you this in the bowl here. So you could see how it just kinda smoothly just yeah. velvety, it's gorgeous. Um, so if I'm gonna make like a, an artichoke uh, tahini hummus, I'll add some artichokes in here. Now, because this is the consistency I want and these have a lot of liquid, I'll normally squeeze them. Just to get some of that excess juice out, um, oftentimes too, I'll take the artichoke hearts and roast them in the oven a little, just to dry them out and, and you know caramelize a little bit of that flavor. Um, but that's gonna help keep you from getting a watery hummus. So I'm gonna squeeze a few more out before I add them in. I mean, if you look between squeezing this handful and a half of artichokes, I got about a half a cup of water out. So you can imagine what that would do to our hummus. Um, I'm gonna add a little bit of garlic to this. Touch of lemon. Hey chef, we had a question. Yes. How much olive oil did you add? So we did a pint of garbanzo beans and I added about, um, about three tablespoons of olive oil. But it honestly depends on the strength of your olive oil too, because some are stronger. Um, some Northern Italian olive oils are really strong, whereas a Greek olive oil, if it's the right kind, will really balance well in here. Um, so it's honestly up to your preference. I'm gonna add a little salt, and then I'm gonna give this a quick buzz. And you can see it doesn't take long because I do want a little bit of chunks. Now I could smooth this out, but this is pretty smooth still. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and put this in a bowl and then we'll go on to the next one. Um, but with one base of garbanzo, pureed garbanzo beans, you can have a lot of different hummuses um, to play with and do at parties. You can use it as dips. Um, we serve it uh, at home. Sometimes I'll do, if I'm doing a dairy-free risotto, I'll thicken it with a, with a hummus. Um, there's all sorts of different fun things you can do. So for the next one, now if I wanted to do a roasted pepper and kalamata olive, I want the big chunks, right? I want big chunks of pepper and big chunks of olives. So I'll actually take that and dice it on the side. Um, as opposed to doing that in the blender, I have my base here. So I'll just take some pepper and cut it really small. And the smaller, the better. So you get the little speckles, you get a bunch of little bites in there. And then it's the same thing for my olive. And because I'm adding the olive, I don't necessarily need to add salt, um, but I, like, I'm a salt lover, so I'd probably add a little bit. And then this would get into a bowl. I would take my trusty spoon and using my regular hummus as the base, fold it in and I have a really awesome roasted pepper and olive spread that I could dip vegetables in, pita in, and that's super simple and easy. And this is where you add some crumbled feta, you can add some herbs like some chopped fresh basil, um, would really just kind of take this over the top. Now, if I were doing say beets, I would take hummus and, let me grab a spatula. And I would again, drain my beets. And draining the beets will, will take some of that moisture out because beets have a lot of water. If you squeeze them, juices come out. And I'll throw just a few in there. You don't need a ton um, because you wanna keep that viscosity and you wanna keep that thickness of the hummus. And I'll throw a lid on it. Up. 
Now you can see it's starting to take on some pinkish hue, but I want a little more. I want a little more beat to it. So I'm gonna add some more beats to do that. Um, and I'll just keep pureeing it and keep working it until it gets to where I want it. So then this one, when it comes out, has just this gorgeous color to it. I'll put that in here so you can see it. And depending on what you like with beets, you know, I love like beets and raw garlic. I, I, I absolutely love it. Um, I love salty beets. I love beets and mint. I mean, there's a million different ways you can play with the beet hummus to just kind of jazz it up at this point. Fancy. But that's really it that's how we make the different hummus dips and different hummus spreads for parties and we gave you some vegetables to be able to just chop some vegetables to have vegetables in hummus we gave you some pita um but for me like i take this olive oil or this roasted pepper and olive hummus and i've smeared on a pita with some grilled chicken on it and it's just an amazing sandwich mm. um but there again you know i encourage you to to play with this have fun see what you can do Are there any questions yeah. No. Pretty easy, right? Yeah. Easy. Yeah. I mean, hummus is so simple and everyone's like, oh, it's homemade hummus. It's like, no, it's ground up beans and then I'm flavoring it. So, <laughs> <laughs> so no, it's not that difficult. Um, but it's fun and it's great for parties and it's actually a great thing to give people too. Mm. If you give someone a tray of hummus and vegetables as a gift, I mean, we got one. My, my, uh, my friend's wife is um, Lebanese. Lebanese? I think she's Lebanese and uh her mom gave us a container of hummus and I was like oh my god it was just the greatest thing and you know it's I don't know it's like getting Christmas cookies from an Italian it's just fantastic <laughs> um all right well if there's no other questions what kind are you making tonight Ooh, I don't know I'm just really glad that the bullet worked for the beans and I did that successfully so like I've already won and like now doesn't even <laughs> yeah and now you just have fun with it yeah, now I, so wait, did you say for like the art, so for the artichoke and for the beet, like take out what hummus you don't need, but then put it back into the, the blender, like to blend that up with the chickpeas? Yeah, so if you're going to make, like make it all into an artichoke hummus, then you just, you know, dry out your artichokes and add them right to what you have. If you want to make two different kinds, take some of the hummus out right. and just add the artichokes to the remaining one. Got it. Okay. Perfect. Easy. Cool. Awesome. Well, thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. So helpful. Awesome. Well, have a wonderful night. You too. See you soon. Bye. Good night. Good night.